A couple of months ago, I published a video which explained the internal building blocks of the 555 chip and by adding a few components, how you make it into a timer. If you've not seen the video already, I suggest you take a look and I will leave a link in the description below. Anyway, here's my illustration of the 555 and the A-stable arrangement that's given in the standard data sheets. So just to quickly recap then, during the charge cycle, current will flow from your supply rail, which we had at nine volts, through these two resistors and start charging the plate on this capacitor here. At this stage, the output will be high, and this transistor here, this NPN transistor, will be off, and therefore this discharge pin is floating because this is effectively open circuit. But once the charge reaches its two-thirds supply, as it's done now, then this transistor turns on, which effectively means the discharge pin is connected to ground, and the capacitor will therefore start to discharge through this resistor through that pin. And also note that the 9 volt supply rail will also transfer current through this resistor through to that ground pin as well. And when the capacitor eventually discharges down to one third of your supply rail, as shown here, then this transistor will, will turn off, meaning this pin again is now floating, and therefore your capacitor will start to charge through these two resistors, and the whole thing starts again. Now, the charge and discharge time of this capacitor is really driven by the values of these two resistors, and of course the value of that capacitor as well. And in my last video, I showed you the standard calculations given in the data sheet. The on time, which is T1, is 0.693 times the value of RA, which is this resistor here, and I had that as a 10K resistor in my last video, um, plus RB, because remember you're charging through this resistor and this resistor to reach the capacitor, and I had that as 100K. Uh, times C, which I add as a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. Now the discharge time is this, T2 is equal to 0.693 times RB in this instance, it only discharges through that resistor, it doesn't pass through this one, and times the capacitance again. And the equations came out as I show there, so our on time was 167 milliseconds and the off was 152, and that's what we achieved on the oscilloscope when we measured it. And I also calculated that it roughly came out to three hertz. Now, one of the problems with this standard A-stable circuit, and many of you actually commented on this, and I said I would do a follow-up video. I know it's taken me a little while to get this done, but the problem is that your on time can never be equal to or less than your off time. That's because your on time is going through both of these resistors. This capacitor is gonna charge much slower than it does discharging through a single resistor. So what we're talking about here is duty cycle, the amount of time the circuit is on during the entire cycle. And here's what I mean. So I put together this spreadsheet to help demonstrate what I mean by duty cycle, and I will leave a copy of this for you to download. I'll put a link in the description below, okay? But basically, this is the, this is the A stable circuit straight out of the data sheet, and you can set here what your uh, A resistor value is. You can adjust the hundreds here, like that. You can adjust the tens column, like that. Uh, put it back to 10, and you can adjust the units column, like that. And similarly, you can do the same on RB. And in the capacitor, you can adjust the hundreds, tens, ones, and point ones. And you can change the, whether it's a microfarad, whether you want to do it in millifarads, farads, whatever, but I had 2.2 microfarads. So this tells us the on time, or T1, was 167 milliseconds, as I just said, and the off time was 152, and the frequency was around 3 hertz. Now if I look at this chart tab, this is what I mean by duty cycle. So the spreadsheet tells us that the duty cycle was 52%. That means this on time here, and here of course, and here is 52% of the entire cycle, whereas the off time is only 48% of the entire cycle. Okay, and you can never achieve a 50% duty or less, or at least you can't achieve 50% duty cycle or less with the standard circuit as it's shown there. So what we really need is some device that routes the current through just this resistor when it's charging and just this resistor when it's discharging. So what component can we use that allows us to route current? Well, it's diodes, of course. The, the diode will only allow current to pass in one direction. 
And if we arrange our circuit like this, then what happens is during the charge cycle, your supply rail will pass through RA. It's blocked by this diode, so it won't route through RB, through this diode and start charging the capacitor. This pin is floating because the transistor, the MPN transistor is turned off, so effectively open circuit. This is the only route current can flow. Then when once, once we reach two thirds of the supply voltage and this transistor turns on, this is now connected to ground and the capacitor discharges through RB through this diode and starts to discharge across that transistor to ground. It can't route up this way because the diode is blocking it. And as before, you have to bear in mind that there is current flowing from your supply rail through the same route, or at least it's through RA and then out through this same route to ground over here. And now the calculations for the timing look like this. T1, or your on time, is 0.693 times RA, the value of this resistor here, times C, the value of this capacitor. And T2, your off time, is 0.693 times RB, this resistor here, uh, times C, your capacitor, and that's it. So T1 and T2 are actually the same calcs. Then your frequency as before is one over that plus that. And your duty cycle, well, that's the on time over the time of the entire cycle. So if we took as an example and made both of these 10K and keep our 2.2 microfarad capacitor as before, then our on time equates to 0 uh, 0.0165 seconds and our off time is the same. So therefore we have a 50% duty cycle and we expect the frequency to about be around 30 hertz. So let's have a quick look at this on the breadboard and see what we get. So there you go, there's the circuit, the 555 chip obviously there. And I'm using my decade resistor network boards again, just so as I can easily change the resistance in a minute. And they're both currently set to 10K. There's my 2.2 microfarad capacitor there. So the current comes from the supply rail here through 110K, and then you can see the two diodes I've got here and here. This is going off to pin seven, the discharge pin. Then through this diode, we will charge through this diode and then into the capacitor. When pin seven goes low, we will discharge this route through this resistor, which again is 10K, through this diode, and then back to pin seven here. And don't forget to put your 0.1 microfarad capacitor on pin five. It's not absolutely necessary, but it makes it more stable. Right, so this now, when I power it, should be oscillating away. I haven't got an LED on it because the frequency is too fast anyway. So we'll have a look at the scope and just see what we got. So you go, I've got my yellow probe on the output pin of the 555, and as you can see, the output is oscillating up and down, high and low. And you, this on time is about 50% of the whole cycle, and it's equal to the off time here. So that's the off time, and that's the on time. It's telling me here the duty cycle is roughly the 50%, whereas expecting 50.35. And the frequency we're getting is roughly, again, what we calculated. I've got 32 hertz there. Now, if I change the on-time resistor, the RA resistor, from 10A to, say, 50K, then we'd expect this on-time to be stretched and the off-time to remain the same. So let's have a look at that. So you go, the RA resistor is now 50K, and the off-time resistor, RB, is still at 10K. So this off-time has stayed the same, but the on-time now is look, it's stretched out. So if I, I'll have to adjust the scale to get that on the screen. So they, now you can see the ratio of the on to the off time properly. And it's telling me the duty cycle now is 83%. The cycle is on for 83% of the total cycle. And we are now at 10 hertz. So you can see that adjusting these resistors is actually affecting the frequency as well. So now let's put that back to 10K and we'll do the same with resistor RB to adjust the off time. So there you go, the RB resistor is now 50K and the RA resistor is now 10K. So the on time is much quicker than the off time and it's telling me a duty cycle of 17% now. And if I just turn on my blue trace, which I've got wired directly to the capacitor, so you can see the charge and discharge of the capacitor as well, you can see that this charge cycle is very steep. The, the capacitor is charging up much quicker than it does when it discharges. And that's because this is only going through a single 10K resistor now, and this is going through 50K of resistance to charge that capacitor. 
So this is stretched out and that's kind of remained the same as what we had before. So there you go, you saw that with this and this at 10k we did indeed achieve 50% and you saw that by adjusting this or this we could adjust the duty cycle up or down. Now one thing to bear in mind is that these diodes will have a voltage drop. So for example when we're charging the capacitor through this resistor and this diode we're no longer charging at 9 volts because this, this diode will have a 0.6 or 0.7 volt drop across it. So therefore you're actually charging the capacitor at about 8.3, 8.4 volts now and you're trying to get to two thirds or one third of the 9 volt supply rail. So it will take slightly longer than what the count state but I wouldn't worry about it, it's so insignificant when there's all kinds of other factors that are going to drift with this type of arrangement. And if you wanted to make this an adjustable duty cycle then you can just make this a variable resistor. Therefore, you'll be adjusting the off time in relation to the on time. One problem with that, though, is if you're increasing the off time, but not the on time or vice versa, you will be affecting the overall frequency. Now, if that's a problem to you, then a better way of doing it is like this. Use a potentiometer instead. So now during the charge cycle, again, comes through RA, through this diode and comes through this side of the potentiometer which will adjust up or down depending on what you've adjusted the potentiometer dial to. And when it's discharging, it goes through this side of the potentiometer, through RB and through your diode. So when you adjust the potentiometer down, this will, get, this will start to reduce this RC resistance and RD will proportionally increase and vice versa. That way you will retain the same frequency but adjust the duty cycle. So let's have a look at that on the bench as well. So there's the revised circuit, 555 obviously there, and we've got a 1K resistor coming from our supply rail across here. That's pin 7 again brought out there, the discharge pin. And it goes through this diode, the first one, and then into one leg of my potentiometer here. Then obviously through that potentiometer to the center sort of white blade when you turn this, it then feeds this capacitor to charge it. In the discharge state, then the capacitor discharge through the other side of the potentiometer through another 1K resistor. There's the other diode in the opposite polarity now. Goes off here and then discharges through pin 7. So again, when I turn this on, it will be oscillating away. So let's have a look at that. So there you go. Once again, I've got the yellow probe on the output pin of the 555 and you can see it's oscillating up and down. Frequency in this instance is just over 47 hertz. And the potentiometer is roughly in the middle, and I'm getting 49.15 duty cycles. So the on time is roughly the same as the off time. So now if I start to turn the potentiometer to the left, you can see that the on time is reducing, and the off time is increasing. Okay, the frequency is roughly staying the same. It will oscillate a bit, a little bit. And if I go the other way, on time is increasing, and the off time is decreasing. You can see the duty cycle there. I can adjust it from 90.2% roughly right down to 8.7, 8 8.8%. 8 All right. So there you go. That shows just by some small adjustments to the A stable circuit that the data sheet provides, you can turn this into now a variable duty cycle or PWM controller, pulse width modulation controller which you could use to drive LEDs and vary the brightness of the LED, or you could use it to drive a motor or whatever. It does have some downsides, as I said. So first of all, you've got the volt drop through the diodes, the 0.6 or 0.7 volt, unless you're using a shock key diode, it'd be much less. And also you can't get this to 100% uh, or zero percent duty cycle because you must protect the current coming into this discharge pin. You can't have zero resistance here because you'll be connecting your supply rail directly through to the ground effectively. And similarly, if you had this as zero, then when you crank the potentiometer all this way, then you're discharging that capacitor through that transistor as well. That itself probably isn't an issue, but certainly driving your nine volt supply directly in through there you're going to cause some damage. And in fact, the data sheet, I think, says that it, the maximum current this can handle is 50 milliamps. So if you want a better PWM controller, then you could go for something like the TL494, and I'll do a video on that at some point in the future. So that's, in a nutshell, how you can make a fully adjustable duty cycle 
555 timer circuit. If you found this video useful, then please click the like button. And if you haven't done so already, then please click subscribe too. All right, catch you later.